All right. Welcome back to another Shifting Schools Off the Cuff. Trisha and I have not done an Off the Cuff in months, literally months. Uh, it has been an incredible summer. We want to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, but here's the thing, folks. I know that it sounds like Trisha and I are together every week because you get to hear either one of us or both of us. And you might have noticed if you've been listening to the esports miniseries, very rarely was it both of us interviewing somebody at the same time because that's why you have co hosts. Uh, you still get to uh, go out and do things and people can cover each other's backs. So, folks, I'm so excited. This is the first time, literally in two months, that Trisha and I have been on the microphone together. Trisha, it is so good to be back on the mic with you. It is great to be here with you, Jeff. Um, especially, you know, I think you and I have been absolutely thrilled, humbled, honored by the number of folks who turned up to listen to that esports mini series. We were getting email after email about, you know, the number of people who were saying, I had no idea that gaming could be used for that. Yeah. Um, and and what we were realizing is these conversations that we were having kind of closed off just in email, we wanted to have a space where listeners could come, could be sharing with one another, because it's great, Jeff, of course, for you and I to have that like one-to-one -one communication with our listeners, but you're a huge believer in the power of community. So am I. So do you want the honor of letting folks know how... You're still welcome to email us, of course, but if you wanted to connect with other listeners, we have put our heads together and figured out a way. Yeah, so this, I am so pumped about this. This has been something I've probably been thinking about for years of how to do this. The problem is, is that, you know, we in education, we have communities everywhere. But what I've noticed in this month of August where I've been out and uh, it's been, I think I counted the other day, 24 school districts in 31 days is my August, uh, which is why we pre-recorded pre a lot of the <laughs> eSports the e mini series that you hear coming out. A lot of those recordings were done, uh, you know, months ago. But I think one of the things that I've been hearing from teachers is I've heard from teachers, well, I don't go on Twitter slash X anymore because of things that are happening over on Twitter slash X. Um, I have people who say, well, I don't go to Facebook anymore because of things that are happening on Facebook. I've heard from educators, well, I don't know where to hang out or I'm now just over on TikTok or I'm on. And what I feel like is Twitter was, and we, I mean, this, this, we did research. And when I say we, there was a bunch of us geeking out back in 2009, 10 and 11. This is a long time ago. We were geeking out on on Twitter, and 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 Twitter kills me of where Twitter has gone. I was, I have, uh, I am less than a hundred thousand in my number of sign up. Like I was one of the first people to go to Twitter, and um, you know we know that at one point in time there were like a million teachers on Twitter. It really was the staff room, the virtual staff room for us. You know we had all of our communities via hashtags. It was an incredible place, and it's so sad to see what is happening over there. To the point where people are saying, you know, I'm done with this or, and Trisha, you and I've talked about this. The conversation is just not the same. I mean, people haven't left. Like I still have my account. You still have your account. We're still producing stuff over there. If you're over on Twitter and you love it still, fine. We're not going anywhere. We're still going to be over there. But do you feel too, you feel the conversation is just, it's just kind of lacking. Yeah. I mean, uh, the algorithm clearly is doing something a little bit different. And so I, I completely get that. Yeah. I think also, Jeff, though, the reality is... I think there's always a natural evolution with where community conversation is because, you know, like I was on MySpace at one point in my life. And of course, I haven't yeah, been right. there for, for a very long time. So um, I, I think that's that's part of social media is there is always going to be a next place. I think it's a really important conversation to have in terms of what do you want from your virtual communities? What do they mm. bring you? Because time and energy is precious, of course. Um, and I think it's always, yeah, you sure. know, you and I have had some conversations about our social media diets, being really intentional with them yeah. so that we can be talking to the young folks in our life too about, oh, you really like TikTok? What do you get from it? What's the emotion yeah. that you go into it with, what's the emotion that you leave it with? Um, and yeah, I, I would agree yeah. with you, Jeff. I don't think that I necessarily log into Twitter feeling the same way that I do logging off anymore. Um, and, you know, we were talking for a long yeah, time right. about how do we have a space that um, 
again, folks can connect with other podcast listeners where we can be testing out some of our resources, sharing things that we are working on and trying to offer folks an alternative. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's kind of our goal is as I feel like, you know, I'm over on Mastodon and there's a little bit of a conversation over there, but it's not the same. Uh, there's this other place called Blue Sky that some people are trying to see, right? When when one community falls, communities pop up everywhere. So what I'm excited to announce, and thank you, Tricia, for allowing me to announce this, because it really has been something I've thought about for years on doing. What I'd love to announce is that we are setting up our own little, how do we bring people together? How do we bring educators together and create, maybe fill that void that we're feeling in a safe, secure not ran by some big tech overlord company place for teachers to have that feeling again, uh, where we can all, you know, come around the campfire and sit and tell stories and bounce ideas and support each other through our own work-life balance struggles that, that we know educators are facing today. And so we wanted to create that space. And we feel like at Shifting Schools, we've built quite the community and we are seeing, you know, our listeners, thank you listeners. Uh, we are, uh, seeing, listen, our, our numbers blew up over the summer. Uh, and I don't know if it was part of the esports series or people are finding us. If you've been listening to us for a long time, thank you for sharing the podcast. But we are getting more and more followers. There's more and more downloads of our free resources. And we just wanted a place for people to come. So we are happy to announce, or I'm excited to announce, that we are setting up a little community where people, people can come and they can hang out. And it is safe. It is just for educators. Um, you, you don't have to go anywhere. It, you can leave any time. Like it's just, it's just a spot and we're calling it camp shifting schools. So if you head over to camp.shiftingschools.com, you can sign up for our little community. Uh, we have resources over there and everything's around this camping theme, which I love. Of course, for those of you watching the YouTube video, uh, we are recording this on a Sunday cause Trisha's and I lives are so busy. So I am in my Sunday gear. I have got my hat on backwards, uh, as I do most of the time when I'm doing heavy work, I I've got to do the King Griffey. I grew up in the King Griffey junior era where the hat's not on backwards. I can't, I can't go to work. Um, but that's and so we're we're just excited to to be there and people know I mean Trisha and I talk about this we both love the outdoors and I think the camp theme really works for us uh, and we wanted a place where people can come hang out share ideas sit around a campfire have conversations in a safe place that is for educators by educators and that's really what this is uh, we're really excited to launch it I think you're going to love the the app that we're using it's called Circle. Uh, it's a, it's a very well known app. The thing I love about it is the experience on your phone. You can download the app when you, when you join our camp, camp.shiftingschools.com. When you join, you can download the app to your phone. So you have it right on your phone. We know that more and more educators are constantly on the go. Uh, there, you can do all kinds of great things over there. Um, I'm really excited to announce it and even more excited to announce. Trisha, do you want to announce this part? I announced that you should announce the next part. If you join camp. Dot shifting schools dot com before September 20th as a what happens Trisha? we've got to thank you so yeah if you and again that link is over there in the show notes if you are thinking how am I going to remember that that's a long that's a long link it's in the show notes yeah um, you sign up before September 15th as a thank you to you for trying September 20th September 20th September 20th thank you Sorry. That's my, my That's okay. bad, my bad. Um, as a thank you for you saying, you know what, I'm going to experiment with this. I'm going to join camp. We always appreciate when educators, you know, throw their hat in the ring, say, I will try something new. We know that's important. Anybody that signs up by that date, you are going to get our brand new self-paced pathway entitled Leading in the Era of AI completely free. We're going to talk a little bit about what's inside of that course, um, but that's our way of just saying uh -oh. thank you. You sign up by that date. And as our token of appreciation, you are going to receive our brand new self-paced course leading in the era of AI. Um, you know, we, we love to sort of say thank you in ways big and small that we can. So we're hoping that you showing up for us also means that we're showing up for you. Um, this is a course that in part was designed 
by the questions that we were receiving. Jeff, you've been in conversation with so many school leaders who had big questions, right? Uh-huh. We are, we're making a big pivot into yeah. a, a big space of the, the unknown. And so we kind of compiled all of those questions together to create this course that hopefully is offering some real support and structure for this big change that um, we're all about to experience. We wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of what's inside of that. Jeff, do you want to talk to folks about um, one of the chapters that you did that's all about reimagining assessment? Yeah. So uh, as Trisha said, you know, with all the conversations we're having with teachers and administrators, we wanted something that really was focused on the leadership side. And when we say leadership, we're talking everything from superintendents and principals, but also Teachers, you're classroom leaders as well. Uh, and, and a lot of these conversations are conversations we need to be having across the board, which is why we're making this free for everyone. Again, if you go to camp.shiftingschools.com, join our community, you're going to get access to this uh, before September 20th for free. Now, one of the things that I'm finding uh, that we're having a lot of conversations around and I'm doing all of these trainings on uh, is reimagining an assessment in the era of AI. And it's probably one of the things that I'm excited about the most because what it's doing is it's forcing us to relook at our assessments. And I've had some amazing conversations with educators. I've had an amazing conversation with educators like, finally, finally, this might be the thing that's going to push us to get away from having kids do so much writing or having kids create essays. Or this is my favorite one. We relied on the essay to assess content knowledge when maybe you were having kids who were not good writers at a disadvantage because that was the mode that we were asking kids to do to show content knowledge. What if this forces us as other modes because ChatGPT can write essays so good, it's leveled that playing field. It's leveled the writing playing field. And most of you listeners know that I'm dyslexic. I talk about it quite often. Um, and, and I just think about where would this be if I was in high school? You know, I mean, if, if you know me, you know, I like to talk. Trish is over here laughing at me because, you know, I like to talk a lot. But, you know, if you'd have asked me my questions, I would have probably gotten better grades than making me write essay after essay after essay. Right. So one of the ways we're thinking about and what's over in the leadership in AI is we've got all these links for you that look at how are we reimagining assessment and the big the big idea. And in the video that I share over there, we start talking about how are we going to basically move from this idea of assessing the product to assessing the process. And in a world of AI, when we talk about assessing the process of writing or the process of creating, we can also start to assess the prompt. The learning happens in the creation of the prompt. You feed the AI, not what the AI outputs. We got to get away. Don't worry about what the AI output. If you are assessing the product that students are creating, you miss the learning. I've talked about this a lot. This is nothing new. This is also standards-based grading. This is also UDL. You name it. This is the way we need to be moving anyways. We got into bad habits. We need to break those bad habits and AI is going to support us in doing that. So that's really what's over there is it's a great video uh, of me going to going into this idea of how do you assess the process we've got because Trisha is amazing. All kinds of things to support you over there. Uh, Trisha, I have to tell you in all the trainings I've been doing, people have been loving the egg drop uh, that you did. You can download that free you can download the free resource over there. We've got it linked here in the Leadership in AI course for you as well. But Trisha went in and said, well, let's reimagine the egg drop, if everybody remembers, where you have to protect an egg. And what I love about this is it goes right to exactly what we're talking about, reimagining an assessment. You never assessed the kids actually dropping the egg. That was the fun part. The fun part was whether the egg survives or not. The assessment comes in the creation of what you created, the research you did and to support your egg. That's what you assess. You don't assess, can a kid climb up a ladder and drop an egg like that? Unless you're in a CTE class where climbing the ladder is one of the standards. That's not what you're assessing. And so we took this idea, Trisha took this idea and actually walks you through what that might look like, giving you a ton of resources. Um, we've also got over there some of the other resources about how do you cite this with MLA and APA have both come out and said, here's how you cite using AI. I go over that in the video over there as well. So just that's just one of the resources that you're going to get is more in depth into this idea of how are we reimagining assessments in the era of AI. All right, Trisha, that's my one of my favorite ones that I did inside this uh, pathway. What's one of the favorite ones that uh, that you created? Oh, goodness. Well, you know, let me just run folks through what the sections actually are first. So we've got change management. 
key terminology, why it matters, finding a framework that works, reimagining assessment, as you heard Jeff just talk about, what is responsible use, and then co-creating policy. And I think actually my favorite is the very first one, looking at change management and thinking about how this is an mm. opportunity you know, Jeff, you and I have talked a lot about this, and we've seen this every single time that we've had a big, bold innovation that, sure, there is fear, right? Um, change can be yeah. destabilizing. Change can make us feel inadequate. And so I think this is a real moment for us to yet again think about how do we approach change as a community building moment? How is this actually giving our mm. community and our classrooms an opportunity to think more carefully about why schools are social, about why we are learning together um, and, and what it's gonna mean as managers of change to A, be willing to admit when you don't know, there are a lot of unknowns right now yeah. and to make space for questions. You know, Jeff, that's one of the things that I see a lot is people not necessarily feeling like it's okay for them to say, I don't even know how to access chat GPT. This is something that I hear, you know, often. And I think if you shame yeah. people about what do you mean you don't know? Folks have to be able to bring those questions, okay. right? And for yeah. peers who are struggling or members of your community, parents and caretakers who are really afraid of this, listen to them, find out what is it that they are worried about. Um, so I think that's a real favorite of mine because, uh, again, it comes back to what are the values of your school community and how is yeah. this a moment to really kind of test those values and um, and to see if you if you mean it. So uh, this course, again, I, I think I'm really glad that we thought about what we were hearing from folks. The creating policy is another big question. We've got lots of different policy examples in there, but some of our guidance is around ways that you can make sure you're inviting students into that process. Because the reality yes. is, um, for, for those who are saying, you know what, I'm just going to block this technology, I'm going to pretend like it doesn't exist. If you look at just about any research, LinkedIn has got some great data around what generative AI means for the future world of work. And if you are just blocking this yeah. and pretending like it doesn't exist, you need to really think about the skills that you are withholding from students and how that is really yeah, unfair. it's an equity play. Yeah. It's an equity play. Yeah, I agreed. No, I agree with you. And I think one of the things we have to realize and understand is it's not going away. So what are you going to do at your school? You're going to block. And I had this great conversation with an IT director you know, he said, here's the problem. We can block this one, but Google is going to be putting it into Google Docs, Word, and Excel, or Google Docs, Sheets, and Excel. Uh, Microsoft is already putting out Copilot inside Word and PowerPoint. And so at what point? And it was really great because the IT manager used something that uh, used an analogy that, that I use a lot, where he said, you end up playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> and here's a really good just kind of idea to be thinking about. If you ever find yourself in a position in education where you feel like you're playing whack-a-mole trying to keep things blocked from kids, you're probably on the wrong side of the game. <laughs> you know, at some point, I mean, yeah, you can block it now, but it's not going to stop. Like the, the companies have already said, this is coming. The world, to your point, the world has said, this is coming, you know? And what... This is an equity play. It's not, a, it's not a technology thing. It's an equity play. We want our world to be equitable. We want our students to be equitable. And we need our students to understand what this looks like. Trisha, I don't even think I told you this one. I met a high school kid down uh, in one of our smaller smaller towns, actually, here in the state of Washington. He's made his summer job making $125 an hour helping to train the AI that's going to go in TurboTax next year. Hmm. How crazy is that? No, no degree. Still in high school. He's a junior. He's going to be a senior this year. 125 bucks an hour. That's a pretty good summer job. If you know how to prompt AIs to support companies, right? So he's typing in the AIs, he's getting the prompt. And then 
uh, QuickBooks or, or Intuit, who owns it, is taking all of that data to say, okay, this was the prompt, this was the output, do we need to tweak it? What do we tweak? What are we doing? What are we doing before they release it? And so you're supporting a company creating these things. 125 bucks an hour? That's not bad for a summer gig, right? So there's, there's opportunities here for our kids and that's part of this, right? How are we co-creating the idea around policies? I want to talk about policies more in our next off the cuff, uh, where we're going to talk about more stories that I've been hearing from the classrooms, uh, in the districts that I've done already. But, um, yeah, this idea of policies, I think is really interesting. We always, we always like our, our policies and then we have so many policies that they don't mean anything anymore. So how do we just do that? And I love the idea of co-creating them with kids because we don't know what the future holds. We don't know what this is. Get the kids in uh, and let's let's make this happen. So, and I think that's the that's yes. one of the best ways of actually getting the community to be aware of the policy is involving them in that process, right? Um, yeah, um, agreed. And so again, here's what we're doing. This is free for you. Tricia ran through those. I'll run through those again. Here's what you get. Change management, key terminologies, finding a framework that works. Trisha has created so many frameworks that you can, if you can't find a framework that works, you can talk to Trisha over at camp.shiftingschools.com. And I guarantee you, she will make a framework that you need for you. Uh, Reimagining an assessment, what is responsible use and co-creating policies. This is a $95 value. We have this on sale for $95 over at Shifting Schools. But if you go to camp.shiftingschools.com and sign up today, it's just, it's our little social network. It's our place to hang out, to have a campfire chat, to come to the big tent. These are all terminologies you're going to see over there. We're having, we're really kicking the, uh, the theme and you can support us in as we build this thing out. But if you join us over at camp.shiftingschools.com before September 20th, you get the entire thing for free. Uh, there's embedded videos in here. There's reflective prompts. Uh, if you've bought anything from Shifting Schools before, you know uh, the quality of stuff that we produce. Uh, and this is just uh, as good as everything else we've done, if not better. So uh, we're so excited to be launching camp.shiftingschools.com. Uh, I'm excited to to be over there with you uh, to figure out how we use this thing and, and where, where can we support uh, a community that right now I feel is fragmented and we're trying to find a place to, to bring people back. Um, and so we thought that this might be something we can do at Shifting Schools as well, because we love talking to all of you. Uh, Trisha, any last words? Our next mini series that's going to kick off September 11th is all about expanding the dialogue on social emotional learning. So if you have a real interest in SEL, again, that's a great reason for you to come join the community. Um, it's not just about our resources, right? We want to hear your ideas, your questions, your strategies. So it, it's a great place, hopefully, for educators to be connecting with educators, asking those important questions, and building our network. So we, we hope to see you over there soon. Yeah. And if you'd have told me, Trisha, if you'd have told me before we did the esports series that an SEL series would be the perfect follow-up to an esports series, I'd have said, what? What do those two have in common? But if you've been listening to our esports series here all summer long, uh, you could probably make those connections yourself. So we're very excited for that. You can find out more, of course, over in the podcast as well. And we really hope to see uh, many of you, if not all of you, over at camp.shiftingschools.com. Of course, there'll be a button at shiftingschools.com. It'll be in the show notes here as well, but it's pretty easy. There's no www. You replace www with the word camp, camp.shiftingschools.com, and we'll see you over there in the big tent. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Until next time, we'll see you on the network. <laughs>